I've been experiencing a lot of deja vu lately. I don't know what to make of it, but I really enjoy it. It feels, I mean, the familiarity of, of something, even though it's foreign and I don't think I've ever seen it before. It's been, it's trippy. You're somewhere you think you've never been before, but then you feel like you've been there. You are here to put together a story about what's happening here and what I'm doing is hopefully passing my knowledge on to the next generation to carry on what I do. The blessings that I do is the same for all canoe. And I've been asked, why do I slap the bow of the canoe. I say, well, never know what's inside. No? Is that too loud? My name, sorry, my name's Rob Prechtel and I'm part of the US raft team. I'm a videographer and photographer, uh, adventure, sports, and really anything that I can get a job doing. I bring my camera wherever I'm going, and I also record most of the things that we do. Hey, John Mark. Hey, bro. Hey, Nor. How'd it go? That was fun. Camera's rolling and it sounded Is really, it really bad. <laughs> I get to see a lot of different sides of our team. Are you nervous, Jeremiah? Thank you for using my Christian name. I need you to talk about uh, river stuff again. <laughs> I can't really remember the first time I got excited about water. I know it was when I was a little guy. Maybe in the bathtub or in the kiddie pool outside. And as, as I grew up, the more intimately I got to know this element, the more I could embrace the uncomfortable feeling of, of the unknown behind water. I joined the team in 2015, and I had maybe been in a raft one other time for a float. So originally my role was to shut up and paddle, just keep paddling. That really irked me a lot and still does. I still get pissed off when I think about it. But these were all accomplished watermen. So being around so many people who had so much knowledge and so much experience really put me in a position to listen. And I'm definitely not the most confident. I'm not overconfident in my ability to do things. And so I doubt what I am frequently. And so at this point, I don't consider myself a water person, but I'm working at it. I wanna be a water person. I was a typical kid, you know, 16, come home from school, want to go surfing, had to work on the canoes, 
oh, I don't want to work on the canoes. I'm never going to be a canoe builder. I'm never going to do this. You know, I just want to surf. And you know, over time, I kind of, I guess I developed an eye for it. And yeah, I'm blessed, very lucky. That was a long time ago and it sticks with you. The sport of outrigger canoe paddling is spreading across the globe. Coach Johnny Puakea traveled all the way from Hawaii to share some of his knowledge. So when I come up here, uh, I'll do design work or think of new designs because I feel grounded and my stomach gets that feeling of, oh, okay, I'm good here, you know, and then I can run my ideas by my dad. He comes out and he'll, you know, he gives me the eye, you know, like, if he doesn't say anything, something probably needs to change or he'll come out and go, wow, I like it, you know, and then I'll cut something up with a bow and say, can you hold this or this? I mean, he's all in. Koa canoes are our connection to our heritage, and they have a feeling when you get in them. You feel everybody else who's been in it, or where it's come from, or how long ago it was built. And now you're part of that. In the old days, it was used for transportation, and for fishing, and getting around, and navigate by stars. Your grandfather did it, and then your dad did it, and then your brother did it, and then you got in the boat at six years old, and someone gave you a paddle when you were in a bathtub. Swing that butt in a canoe, okay? Swing your legs in, reach for your blade if it fall out, okay? Just count how much you get on top there. When I was growing up in my house, get all these canoe pictures on a wall of my uncle and my cousins. When they'd win the race, after the race, they get all the lays and all the pictures. And so, I just grew up seeing that and knowing that all my mom, my aunties, my cousins, everybody paddled. When I had the chance to paddle, I saw my friends paddling and they asked me for paddle. I jumped in a canoe and I never stopped. I was 19 years old. Friday night, get some good sleep and then we'll see you guys Saturday morning, 6.30 at the pavilion, okay, in Hanalei. All right? Okay, everybody. Kumomo. 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 I think it's innate in us. I think it's just, it's part of our DNA. My mother used to always tell us, whatever you grow and become, whatever you have, whatever knowledge you have, you have to share it because if you don't share it, it dies with you. And so what good is it? Yeah, I get a phone call, you know, and, hey, we're a rafting team, and we want to do some outrigger. What do you think? And I'm like, all right, this ought to be interesting, you know? And right away for me, I'm thinking, all right, let's do it. You know, like, what do I have to do? What do you need? John Mark and Seth were really the drivers of this specific idea. They continually have this spirit of adventure, and, and I think we all do, but they seem to be more on tack with getting us to the point where we can actually go do these things. I hate hugs, but I love you, so. What's the proper way to carry this thing? Two, Two guys here. You show up and they're all smiley faced. And they're all these big stud guys. Then I stick them in a canoe and I'm like, whoa, okay, we got some work to do here, you know? Forward more first. Yep. Keep it longer, longer in the water, longer. Do it again. You guys all look down. At I didn't know when I danced, too. <laughs> what was cool about going into the outrigger canoe was seeing everybody out of their element and everything you do affects where that single organism is going. The more sensitive you get to the whole crew being as one, I call it a dance. We're just moving together. I just got a lot better. They're pulling like real smooth now and they're relaxed because they're tired. It 
it's been a huge change from rafting, developing the power and the efficiency that's needed for outrigger paddling. And that's been kind of a process. And so heading away from the mountains, First race was in Hood River. We were hoping for some waves and some swell. We missed that. It was only hot, dry. They can be as fast as can be out here. And they'll get in the ocean, and it's going to be a completely different, humbling experience, I would think. Coming out here, we had kind of just heard through the grapevine that there might be someone in the area around here that was gonna maybe let us look at an old koa boat. Just seeing it was, we were all kind of in awe a little bit. Last year we had 70 kids, and then this year we had 30, 32 kids. So more than half the team may fall out. But hopefully they come back they next come year. Back, yeah. Yeah. Just this year, we raced a few races out here. It was nuking yeah. over the wall up there. We was going down to Point Pu, a 12 mile race. We just raced from here to the lighthouse on Triangle. Out there was nuking. <laughs> and they asked us if we wanted to go out in the boat. And I think everybody looked at each other with kind of a little hesitation, but a lot of excitement. We're proud when we see the boys from Colorado in our canoe. We, they're going to be on Starry Foss for years to come and we can feel the spirit you know that the joy of being in that core canoe yeah we can feel them yeah so it makes us feel good too yeah we've traveled around the world we got to see different cultures and see how they're affected by the things that we do or the things that we say and and what our cultural norms are and the more opportunity you take to try to learn about yourself and figure out how to connect with other people and other things and the world in general, the better off we are as a people, as a place, and really being open and receptive to that kind of idea has been a major learning experience for me. and the clubs from out far in different islands and from the mainland. Thank you so much for coming here today to um, help participate in our Nepali challenge. We're gonna get started by having the Nao Pio from Kilohana do the opening pole. I've been experiencing a lot of deja vu lately. I don't know what to make of it, but I really enjoy it. You're somewhere you think you've never been before, but then you feel like you've been there.
you gotta focus, especially when you're racing. But like I tell the kids, take time to enjoy the beauty of the the landscape while you're in a canoe, or when you're out of a canoe, just check it out a little bit, you know. That was one of the um, pieces of advice: was look, look around for a second, enjoy where you're at, and I. I lost myself in the struggle of the ocean. I'm definitely not the most confident. I'm not overconfident in my ability to do things, and so I doubt what I am frequently. And so at this point, I don't consider myself a water person. But I'm working at it. I want to be a water person. Third place, nine ball pool care unlimited division. Thank you. We got some young kids in there. They're strong. Good job. Today, I, I am so full of pride, and right now it's just like, because I see these young people, and I finally realize that what I taught them, it, they, they absorbed it. But back then, they hated me, they didn't want to come to practice, I was mean, I was hard, but now, they tell me things like, you know, it's helped me be what I am. We've made it to Oahu, and we met up with Johnny and Jennifer. Jennifer allowed me to borrow her boat, so I'm gonna go paddle with Johnny. Figured I'd carry his pink boat for him. <laughs> the beauty of canoe paddling to me is you have a lawyer, a business owner, and a plumber in the boat at the same time. As soon as you get into the water in the boat, everybody's the same people. We're all part of a family in a sense, you know? You get in the boat, you leave land, it's quiet, you get away and you're just kind of in this zone and your whole world changes that, at that moment. I think Johnny just likes having fun. It's like going back to being a kid again when you're out there. I think that's what we're all looking for. Yeah. Forget it. Feel it. Well, like I tell everybody, this canoe, it was carved from a single log. And when I got it, about the 90s, mid-90s, the bow went working? one way, the stern went the other way, and it started to twist. Yeah. So, How long did it take to even it out? About 15 years. Still working on it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right on me. Here, yeah. all the way back. Yeah. If you're like us, we can feel the vibration. I can put my hands on it and I, I, I can feel. That is a living thing. It does have feelings, believe it or not. Maybe you don't feel it, I do. Whether it's carved by me or anyone else, it has a life of its own. Each one is a living entity.
Give it a lot, boy. You know, your turn. There were deserts on the seafloor, mountains higher than any peak you'll ever see, up upon dry land as I fall. I give my body back as I fall. Past a sunken empire. Seaweed forests sway you into the limestone road, ancient merchants laid underwater cyclones, tearing at my skin. I see the edges soften as I shed some part back in as I fall. I give my body back as I fall. Supper spread does weigh Cutlery of silver Salt and pepper shape The octopus is guarding The fire coral grove Walking on my heels now The water took my toes as I fall I give my body back as I fall 